Welcome to shop vlog number 33. It's been a while since we did one of these and I got a lot to talk about. I especially want to dive into the argument over dado sets because it's not like our European viewers are already trolling me enough over the metric system. So why not talk about the other thing that really sets them off? Don't worry though, I have a solution that I think will end this debate forever. I'll also share some other interesting tidbits from behind the scenes of the Stumpy Dubs Woodworking Journal shop. And of course, between segments, you get to see some of the projects we've been working on, like this one. So let's talk dado sets, particularly how our friends on the other side of the world view them. You see, here in the United States, we're perfectly comfortable with stacking several table saw blades together so we can cut wide kerfs for dados, grooves, rabbits, tenons, and other joinery. That's right, I said rabbit, not rebate. We say weird stuff in America too. You should hear the way we pronounce aluminum. But outside the land of the free and the home of the brave enough to have dado sets, some folks view them as table saws version of the wood chipper at the end of Fargo. In some countries, the government has taken one look at all those spinning teeth and immediately taken legislative steps to save their citizens from themselves. Other countries have merely said, you can have a dado set if you want one, it is your choice. Of course, you can't have a table saw with an arbor long enough to fit one, but you can totally have a dado set. The result has been that many of our international viewers have little or no experience with dado sets, and when they see one in a video, they brace themselves, expecting it to shred my arms to the elbows at any second. As an American, I've used dado sets for years, and for a long time I wondered if the Europeans knew something about dado sets that us dumb backwater hicks in America didn't. Keep in mind that I'm no expert in international law, and while I am having a little bit of fun here, I understand that not all European countries have the same standards, so forgive me if I make a few generalizations that don't apply perfectly to where you live. I know you'll feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm at all imprecise. But as near as I can tell, the European dado set issue comes down to two things. Brakes and blade guards. Many table saws over in the old country, particularly those used in commercial activities, must be equipped with some sort of electronic braking system that stops the blade from spinning within 10 seconds of when you hit the off switch. That's relatively fast, especially if you have a heavy blade or a stack of them in a dado set. The arbor nut that holds the blades on threads in the opposite direction that the blade spins, so the opposing force of the teeth cutting through the wood cannot cause the nut to loosen up. But if you stop a heavy dado stack too quickly, the momentum of that now unopposed blade stack may actually loosen the arbor nut. Theoretically, the blade could come off. That is why it could be said that dado sets are not technically banned in some places. The law isn't about the dado set. It's about limiting how long a saw blade coasts before it stops. The braking systems that are required to stop that coasting just aren't compatible with heavy blades like dado sets. So the law limits the length of the arbor so you don't find that out the hard way. The other reason for banning dado sets that I often hear is that you must remove the blade guard and the splitter or riving knife to use one. And this is true. A dado set is used to make cuts that do not go all the way through a workpiece. So the splitter that holds your blade guard on top of your saw must be removed to use a dado set. Normally, when you remove a blade guard, you replace it with a riving knife to prevent kickback, which is often caused by wood pinching against the side of the blade and being lifted or ejected when that pressure is on the back teeth that are coming up from the saw and towards your face. A riving knife shields those back teeth from that pressure if it is of equal thickness to the blade. It wouldn't be possible to make a riving knife equal in thickness to a dado set because dado sets are really thick and they're adjustable. But kickback is really rare when making non-through cuts such as you would with a dado set. It can happen, but I believe it is far less common than it might be if you were to make a through cut without a riving knife. 
So those are the reasons why many countries do not allow data sets, or they at least make it hard to buy and impossible to use them. In a couple minutes though, I'm going to solve this age-old problem and generations of debate and bring peace to the world. As you know, I love history, and I think I have that in common with a lot of those who practice traditional crafts such as woodworking. I also enjoy cycling. So I've been listening to an audiobook called An American Cycling Odyssey by Kevin Hayes. It's a retelling of this fascinating story of George Nellis, who rode a bicycle from New York to San Francisco in 1887. Now, before you say, a guy rode a bike across the country, what's the big deal? Remember. This was 1887. This was when there were no major cross-country routes, almost no pavement outside a few big cities. Most roads were backcountry wagon paths. And forget about modern bicycles. He rode a penny farthing style with the big front wheel. Imagine how bumpy those trails and wagon ruts felt on a wooden seat and hard rubber tires. Taking a header was a pretty common term in those days for flying over the handlebars because it happened quite often. Also imagine direct drive pedals. They spin out of control as you go down a hill. You couldn't coast like a modern bike. You had to lift your feet up off the pedals and hold your legs in the air lest they get broken by that spinning crank. Still, he completed the journey in just 72 days, which was a record, and he wrote about his experiences along the way in articles for newspapers and magazines because everybody was really eager to hear about this, this guy riding a bicycle across the country. What makes this audiobook so interesting, though, isn't the cycling so much as the picture it paints of how different things were back then, especially rural America. This was before automobiles, when people didn't often travel very far from their homes. All the gas stations and the party stores and the places to just pop in for a break and grab some lunch, they didn't exist. He had to stay out in the open, in barns, have breakfast with local farmers that would take him in and feed him. He survived dust storms and thunderstorms on the open plains. In small towns, everyone turned out to see the man on the bicycle. Some even followed him for miles after he left. An American Cycling Odyssey is just a fascinating story that I highly recommend. You can get it or another of Audible's thousands of titles for free if you visit audible.com slash stumpynubs. Or from your phone, you might just text stumpynubs to 500-500. That'll get you a free 30-day trial and access to their massive library. I've been a paying member of Audible for years, long before they became a supporter of this channel. I love listening to audiobooks while I work, when I travel, when I walk the dogs, or ride my bike. I even listen to podcasts from their Plus catalog, which includes unlimited listening to thousands of titles. Again, that free trial is at audible.com slash stumpynubs or text Stumpy Nubs to 500-500. So you ready for me to solve the great data set debate? No, the answer isn't just to use a router table. Although many of the things you can do with the data set can also be done with a router table. The problem is a router bit usually has two cutters on it, while a data set has dozens of cutters. Guess how many router bits you'll dull before you dull a data set? Data sets aren't cheap, but they are vastly less expensive in the long run than router bits. They're also much faster and more powerful. I have a good router table and excellent quality router bits, but if I have a lot of tenons to cut or dados to plow, I'm using my table saw and a good dado set to get the job done. So if a router table isn't the answer, what is? Floating blade guards. I think they solve two of the three problems authorities have with dado sets. Since it covers the saw blade, it no longer matters how long it takes for that blade to coast to a stop. It's covered. So electronic brakes then aren't needed. 
And then there is no worry that a heavy dado set could come to a stop too quickly and loosen that arbor nut. I've never had my arbor nut come off because my blade doesn't come to a stop too quickly. A floating blade guard may also keep the blade covered during non-through cuts, so that is no longer an issue either. The only thing this type of guard doesn't address is the incompatibility of riving knives with dado sets. But as I said, kickback is exceedingly rare in my experience when making non-through cuts with a dado set. I admit my solution isn't a perfect one. I'm sure some of you will poke holes in the idea. Maybe it won't bring world peace after all, although I don't think the United States is at war with Europe. I'm just throwing it out there for the sake of discussion, not because I think that the regulators are actually going to adopt this idea. These guards are also pretty expensive to buy for large cabinet saws like this one, but I've seen some homemade versions as well, and I'm sure a inventive marketer could come out with an inexpensive version for even smaller table saws. I don't know. Maybe it's a good solution, maybe it's not, but at least I'm working to get you Europeans your dado sets back, so you're welcome. Next time I'll solve the other issue dividing American woodworkers from the rest of the world, our rip fences. You've probably noticed we have been putting out a lot of videos lately, more than a dozen in the last three weeks. Frankly, I've been behind schedule, and I've become this video-making machine trying to catch up. Really, I would like to get a bit ahead of schedule so I can do some vacationing in the second half of 2021. With the pandemic and everything, it's been a long time since I've traveled anywhere, not even for business. So I am really looking forward to taking some time off. I have a trip to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan planned in September. That should be a lot of fun. There are countless waterfalls all over the UP and you hike back to them and you're rewarded by this spectacular view sometimes. We also have sort of an annual kind of like guys camping trip planned with Mustache Mike and a couple other friends for the beginning of October. I like to try and forget about work when I'm vacationing, but when I camp, I do like to do some wood carving. It's very relaxing, especially in the middle of the day when there's just not much going on. And if I mess up, it's easy to destroy the evidence. The last time I went, I took a DSLR to film a little bit of my carving to make a video because even though I am on vacation, I can't pass up the chance to get some good footage. I'll probably at least take a GoPro with me and see what I can get. I don't know how that footage will look, but it'll be something. So you can look for that in a video this fall. But even sooner, you can just keep an eye on our Instagram and you're going to see that kind of stuff. You might have noticed we've been posting a lot more on Instagram the last year or so. Some of it is personal stuff, but most of it is woodworking or project related, such as this staircase we've been building or Pete's range hood. Instagram has been a big resource for woodworkers for a long time, and we've had a page for years, but we've really started posting more over the last year or so. And I highly recommend you follow Stumpy Nubs on Instagram. You'll see things there that you'll never see on our YouTube channel. Well, that's about it for this vlog. It's a little short but I'll try to do another one really soon. So thanks for hanging out. Sit back and have yourself a cold one because you've earned it. Ridge Carbide is the best cut secret in woodworking. I kid you not, their saw blades are second to none, both in quality and performance, and they're less expensive than the other ultra premium brands. Do yourself a favor, use the link and the discount code below this video. You will never go back to cheap blades again. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.